Hi guys, welcome to this week's video tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at SketchUp. So let's go ahead and open that up. Probably the first time you open it's going to ask you what template you want to be working in. Now we're in architecture and in millimeters, so that's the one we're on. So we'll start using SketchUp. Now SketchUp, SketchUp automatically starts with a relatively simple interface. Um, so we need to change this to make it more suitable for the things that we'll be doing. Um, so if you go to view toolbars, scroll down and start turning all of these on one by one until you get to large tool set and that's it and then you can turn off your getting started tool set because you're a bit stronger than that. Okay let's get out of there let's just put sandbox in here so it sits nicely. A few of these things you won't need. There'll be double ups. You can get rid of those later. Put this higher up. Cool. Okay. Good. So now we've got the things we need to get started in SketchUp. Uh, and a good thing when you're first learning, when you, you still want to know what the tools are and how to use them, is to leave the Instructor tab open. Now if that's closed for you, you can go over to Window and instructor and that'll open that back up and what that does is depending on which tool you've got selected I've got the eraser it tells you what that tool is how it's used and some shortcuts to get there and a few other things so these are really really helpful uh, in your first couple of tries at SketchUp to help you understand what the tools are and how to use them so really useful for you I'd encourage you all to have a look around at the various different things that we have available to us on SketchUp. Um, there's different viewports up here. You can have a look from different angles when you're working architecturally. A lot of the time you'll be in perspective mode. Uh, if you click the scroll wheel on your mouse, it allows you to orbit around. Um, you'll note Instructor over here has changed the orbit tool when I scroll. Um, lots of tools over on the left, freeform. Um, using line tool, aka pencil in SketchUp, uh, lots of things going on. Um, so today we're not going to go through everything, but we'll go through some of the basics to get you started. And then from there, we encourage you to do some exploring yourself and um, figure out the best way to do it for you. There are many, many, many ways in SketchUp, just like Adobe, to do lots of things. Um, so the best way to do that is to experiment. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is delete our little man. He's a bit unnecessary at the moment. And from there, really, it's important to just play around with some shapes and get to know the tools. So the pencil over here is sort of like your line tool. You can type in measurement. and It'll come up down the bottom here. So if I type in meters or 3,000 millimeters, it's automatically done it that way. And you'll notice when it goes on the green axis, I know that it's going to be locked that way. If it's on the red axis, it's locked that way. Or if it locks on the blue axis, it's going to go upwards. If I go five meters up, and I scroll around that, I can see that that has gone vertically. And let's go back to the blue axis and back down again. Now I've made a rectangle. And you'll notice how in SketchUp, when you finish a line so that all the points are complete, it will make a white box. So notice how all these points are complete. They form different faces. So now when I get the face in between that with that line there, now all the faces are complete. Uh, one of the beauties of SketchUp is that lines that aren't necessary anymore, you can go back and delete them later. Or alternatively, you can leave them there and start to do some other things with purely just this rectangle or just this triangle. For example, the push-pull tool here allows you to extrude just that shape out there, just that triangle there, so they might be going in different directions. But if we undo that, we get rid of this line here. Now it pulls as one big shape. So you get an understanding of that. Likewise, if I delete one line from this triangle here, to get rid of that triangle altogether, and now I can start and pull this triangle. Great. All right, so there's a few basic things that you should know. So, if we're working with rectangles, quite common in architecture, if we type in the first dimension, let's go 2000, 
a comma, and then the next dimension, 5,000, will give you that rectangle. So quite simple, just like AutoCAD, except instead of typing commands, you've got your tools on the left here. Um, there are plenty of uh, ways to get some interesting shapes in AutoCAD. A, a good way that I like to do it, and obviously everyone will have different is I like to set up some guides uh, first using this measurement tool. Uh, and then from there, we can start to do some, some pretty interesting things. So let's go up this way, over here, and another one over there. So we'll notice we've got different guides at different heights. And now if I start to draw in some line work and some things happening here, we might end up with some pretty interesting shapes. So keep this thing going. We'll complete the shape. Right. So using the guides allows you to create shapes that you wouldn't normally see, um, or sorry, that you wouldn't normally have by using something like uh, Archicad or Revit, where it tries to have just standard wall shapes. Now, sometimes you end up with these blue faces, and what that is, is it's the inverse um, of the white face, so it's basically looking at the underside of the sheet. So if you right-click on that, and go to reverse faces and make sure you're always looking at the white side otherwise when you go to render later it will do some funny things so just get in the habit of making sure you've got your white side facing you then we can start to push and pull some of these shapes and see what that does we're going to end up with some pretty interesting things right so we're starting to orbit around that and we can start to draw lines into these things again and end up with some pretty interesting shapes. So if you do end up with a box like this, you can actually close the gap if you'd like to. So you can draw a line back through there, through there, and that's closed that gap. And then I can go around here and reverse these faces if I wanted to. Um, another thing that's interesting you can do is to draw lines on top of a face, for example like this and then once you have these lines you can actually push into the back of the shape so now we're ending up with some pretty interesting things here so your geometries can become quite complex if you want to otherwise they can become quite simple as well um, so obviously this is would be how you would put a window into a facade you would draw the outside edge and then you would push it through to the other side um, and you can either just delete this rear face off here so now that it goes through otherwise if you put it to the edge it will sit where it needs to sit uh, once you have that shape it's still directly editable so i can now push and pull these shapes here have some other interesting things happen as well um, so yeah SketchUp allows you a good depth of freedom so that you can start to play and get quite creative about the shapes that you're working with. Um, again, there's arcs and circles. You can start to rotate your shapes around, do some interesting things. Um, there's some um, tools up here, um, ones like Sandbox. Um, down here, you can do some pretty interesting stuff as well. Uh, loads of things going on in SketchUp. Um, again, we can have a look at this thing in wireframe. If it's important just to grab the lines, uh, we can see it as just a monochrome. Uh, otherwise, we can start turning on some shadow and some interesting things as well. So, yeah, SketchUp can do some really powerful things. So that's a basic insight of what um, SketchUp is doing. Uh, we're going to have a look again at doing some rendering next week and you're going to render out some perspectives. Uh, but for this week, it's important just for you to get a good handle of SketchUp, understand what it is that you're looking at, make a SketchUp model of your touchstone, and then make some more models abstracting different forms and different things based on parts of your touchstone. 
So we don't just want to see you sketch up your touch, touchstone because anyone could do that. We want to see you develop it further and turn it into something else again. So it should get quite spatial. It should become quite architectural, but that doesn't mean it has to be a boring box. Um, and that's what we want to see for next week. And then your next video tutorial will be on rendering and perspective making so that you can start to take these into Photoshop and make some killer awesome images. Okay, guys, that's this week's tutorial on SketchUp. Again, if you have any questions, any recurring things that come up in class, we can always make those into tutorial videos for you as well. Um, so please do feel free to ask any questions, send us an email. Uh, otherwise, we'll be in touch on Monday. All right, guys, that's the end of the session. Hope you've enjoyed it. Happy days. Cheers. See ya.